In this video, we'll review how to create box plots, both the regular and the modified box plots. So first I'm going to work with the chocolate chip cookie data. And first let's just do um, one on the Keebler chips. So I'm going to go to Graph, Box Plot, and I'm going to select Keebler. And I'm first going to do it without the option here. This is what we call the regular uh, box plot. And this is the one that's not using the fences to identify outliers. So there's what I see. Now if I go back into options and I edit it and I click that option to use the fences to identify the outliers, now I see I've got some outliers both on the top and on the bottom. And remember if I take my mouse and drag it across here, it will identify for me which observations correspond. So on the top side, when I'm looking at Keebler, I've got uh, two uh, cookies with 37 and one with 38. If I click in row here, it'll unhighlight. And then if I want to find the low outlier down here, I see I've got two uh, in Keebler that have only 24 chips per cookie. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to show you on this one, which is a nice feature of box plots. So although um, the data here for the different cookies are in different columns, I can actually show those on a single on a single graph. So if I go back to graph and box plot, and I'm going to go ahead and select all the cookies. Use the control click to click select all of them. And let's go ahead and use the fences this time. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it says use same X and Y axis. And that will put all five cookies on the same graph. And so now you can see, you can make this larger, um, that there are outliers now. Uh, we notice we did the keyboard before. We also see there's an outlier here in the Hannaford, which again I can highlight and it will show me that that's a high outlier. And that one's got 21. And if I notice, this one actually has on average a lot fewer um, uh, cookies, uh, I'm sorry, chips per cookie than the others do. Um, but that's a way when the data are in different columns in order to show it all on the same uh, chart, remember in your options, go back here and go all the way to the bottom and tell it to use the same X and Y axis. You'll only want to do that when the data were collected on about the same scale, otherwise the graph would look very distorted. Now let's do another example where we have a grouping variable. And for this one, I'm going to use the um, foot and height data, which is up here. And I'm going to use the variable shoe print, uh, which is actually the length of the shoe measured in centimeters. So first I'm going to do the regular box plot. And I'm going to do the shoe print. Oops, print. And I'm not going to use the fences. All right, and then I see there's my box plot. Looks pretty symmetric. I don't see any real skewness. If I go back into the options now and I select that, use the fences. Um, again, I don't see any um, outliers on that one. But now let's go in and let's do this by group by sex. All right, so now when I do it that way, now I find on the male side, I do have some outliers. And I see here there's one on the high side. And again, I can highlight and see, and that one was a shoe um, length of 34.5 centimeters. And on the low side, I've got two of them here. And actually three, there's some multiples in there. So I've got 29.7, 29.7, and a 27.6. So again, two different ways. In this case, the data were all in one column, but they were grouped. They had a grouping variable here of sex, and I was able to show those on the single graph. And remember in the other example I showed you, you had uh, similar data in different columns, and you use the same x and y axis to graph the um, box plots on the same graph. So two different ways to do your box plots when you want to show multiple graphs, uh, multiple box plots on the same graph.